Good morning, Griffin Center Point Church. It's going to be an incredible day in the house of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. You may be asking, why are we here? Why are we going to open up this day with, with, with praise and with worship? What, why is this going to be a great day? Can I just read you some scripture this morning? Power comes from the Word of God. Reasoning comes from the Word of God. In Ephesians chapter 1, 6 and 7, it says, To the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved, meaning all of us together who are called by His name, Jesus. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace. Aren't you thankful for the grace of God today? Pastor Davis and I were talking on the road just as we were traveling. We were just saying, if we could just understand the love of God and the grace that He bestows on us on a daily basis, minute by minute, you wouldn't have to have anybody to ask you to come on in and let's praise God. But to the glorious praise of His name today, we stand all who can stand. We lift our voice all who can speak. We move about whatever we need to do to give God praise for His amazing grace. That's why we're here today, and that's why we open up giving Him the glory that He deserves. Father, we honor You because You are God. We stand in awe of who You are, Jesus. We thank You for the blood that You shed for us. And we can come into this place today in Your name, magnifying You and thanking You, glorifying You for Your amazing grace. We thank You, Jesus, for who You are, that You are the Lord of our life and the Lord of this day. Be pleased with our praise as we thank you for your amazing grace. It is in your name we pray. All God's people shout, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together for the King of kings and lords. Come on, come on. Oh. is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless and all in wonder the king of glory the king above all kings come on sing this with us say this is amazing grace. Come on, say. This is a baby love. That you would take. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. That you would bear my cross. Come on, sing it out. You lay down. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. That I would be set free. Oh. Who was 
look on the grave So not even death can shake us The victor has won And heaven has come And you're taking us higher Taking us higher, we go from glory to glory to glory. We'll never be, we'll never be the same. We'll never be the same. You take us, you take us higher and higher and higher. We'll forever, we'll forever change. Forever change. We go, we go from glory. From glory to glory to glory, we go from glory to glory to glory. We go from glory to glory to glory. We go from glory to glory. Come on, let's declare that over our lives. We go from glory to glory to glory. Come on, we go. We go from glory to glory. Whatever you're facing this morning, come on. We go. We go from glory to glory to glory. We go. We go from glory to glory. Come on, from victory to victory to victory. We go. across the room and just thank him. Thank him this morning that we don't have to remain in the same place, in the same situation, in the same messes. But instead we go from glory to glory to glory, victory to victory to victory, from one level to the next level to the next level, constantly winning whatever we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We declare this morning that there is no one higher than you, God. No one bigger than you, God. No one greater than you, Jesus. Oh, we lift you up. You're bigger than our circumstances. Bigger than our mistakes. Bigger than our mess-ups. Oh, God.
Our Father, Creator, you hold our hearts together. There's no one higher than you. Redeemer, Defender, our great and mighty Savior, there's no one higher than you. And you are always with us, gracious to forgive us, and by your power we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence. Yeah. Astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are lifted high in surrender. Your grace for me is always enough. And there is no one higher than I. There is no one greater than you. So let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than you. Majestic in wonder, you reign in love forever. There's no one higher than you. Your beauty, your splendor, your glory knows no measure. There's no one higher than you. You are always with us, gracious to forgive us. And by your power we've been set free. And Lord, we stand amazed in your presence. Yes, we do. Astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are lifted high. Our hands are lifted high in surrender. For your grace. Your, your grace for me is always enough. Come on, let's declare this. Say, there is no one higher than our God. There is no one. There is no one greater than you. So let my life forever. Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than Astounded by your 
mercy and love Our hands are lifted high and surrender For your grace for me is always enough Lifted high, come on. Our hands are lifted high and surrender. Your grace, your grace. Your grace for me is always enough. Come on, let's declare this. There is no one higher. Say. There is no one higher than our God. There is no one greater than you. Let my life forever praise.
Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's the battle of the mind this morning. Maybe you just had a bad week. You know, sometimes we have bad weeks. Maybe it's just a bad week. I don't know what high thing you brought in here, this, in here today, that you brought in here with you. But at the mention of the name of Jesus, every high thing must fall. Everything that stands against God's word must bow. Yeah. There's nothing higher and nothing greater than the name of Jesus. Whatever you need from God this morning, at the mention of his name is given. At the mention of the name of Jesus, we find healing. I don't know about you, but if you are sick, man, at the mention of Jesus' name, you can have healing this morning. I believe that. Does anybody else believe that? If you're bound this morning, at the mention of the name of Jesus, it's freedom. Maybe your marriage is tore up this morning. At the mention of the name of Jesus is unity. Let's sing that just a little bit more. Nothing greater, nothing higher than the name of Jesus. Lord, we stand amazed in your presence. How we worship you this morning, God. Astounded by your mercy and love. Our hands are lifted high in surrender. Your grace for me is always enough. There is no one higher than our God. There is no one greater than you. Let my life forever praise the glory of your name. There is no one higher than Lord. We stand amazed in your presence. Astounded by your mercy and love Our hands are lifted high in surrender Your grace for me is always enough And there is no one higher than our God There is no one greater you this morning God God we thank you for your power God for your grace and for your mercy God that even when we're messed up and even when we don't have our stuff together God you love us so much God that you that you care about us right where we're at God this world and this society tells us that we have to have all our stuff together before we can come to you and all you want us to do is to come to you and to fall at your feet how we worship you this morning how we thank you this morning that above everything in our life good or bad above everything in our life God you're greater and you're higher God and we lift your name up and we worship you this morning God giving you all the praise and all the glory today God we thank you thank you for meeting with us today God, thank you for meeting with us. God, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your power, God. And we ask you to speak to us today. God, pour out in this place today. We ask it in your holy son's name, Jesus. And everybody says, amen. I would like to welcome you today to Griffin Center Point Church. Can we make some noise? this morning. God is good. God is good. God is good. Thank you so much for being with us today. If you're watching on live stream, we welcome you. Thank you for joining us today. If this is your first time here today, um, welcome home. 
Thank you for being with us. We are excited and we are glad to have you today. Um, announcements, if, when you came in today, you should have been handed a sheet that has announcements on it. You can look at that. Um, there's all kind of stuff going on. Um, pastor's going to announce some things a little bit later, so I'm not going to step on his toes. And I don't know what he's announcing, so I'm going to let him do that in just a few minutes. Uh, I don't want to cross the line. You know, got big news coming. Got this conference coming up. Who's excited? Anybody excited? I am excited and pumped up and uh, some stuff's been released. A few things have been leaked out throughout the week. And I, I'm sure you've been following along because I know y'all do social media. Even the superstars, I see y'all on there. We done been through that, haven't we? We done been through that. But um, so good to have you here today. We are so thankful that you're with us. Why don't you take just a few minutes? Why don't you go shake hands with somebody, introduce yourself to somebody you don't know, and tell them how great it is to be here today. We love you.
I'm so used to pushing mute. And uh, my brother said, don't do it. And I'm just, I just do what I do. Celebrate Recovery is a great program. Can I just brag on Andrea for just a minute? We had a, uh, a young lady over in Griff, uh, LaGrange that was wanting to start Celebrate Recovery. And she just, she was walking through it, but just couldn't, couldn't kind of get the traction to get it going like she wanted to. And uh, she came during prayer and met Andrea, and all this stuff just kind of started just snowballing. And, and uh, now the, the meeting in, in LaGrange is probably about 25 people every week. And, uh, and I want to thank Andrea for really helping make that happen because she really did put traction behind what Audrey was wanting to do. So uh, if you're not, if, if, if we get this idea that, that Celebrate Recovery is for addicts and it's for, for any of us that have uh, damaged lives. Maybe, maybe you got hangups that you just can't seem to get over. Uh, I, I probably need to be in there more than anybody else. You know, I got some hang-ups. And, uh, but uh, even if you're not in the classes, being a part of the ministry is very important. They need people that will do with the, with the children. They need people that will be involved with food. Uh, it is a huge undertaking, and, uh, and it is going well here, and it is going to continue to be blessed. We believe that God blesses these things. So we just thank you for... Uh, for letting it happen here, uh, for, for letting ministry happen, because sometimes ministry is messy. Is everybody okay with that? I mean, you know, ministry's not always pretty. You don't always get the perfect children in first grade. Uh, any teachers agree with that? Yeah, they're just, it just happens that way. But when you love enough, when you care enough, you're willing to let mess happen. And so I thank you for letting Celebrate Recovery happen here and be a part of it. You probably need it more than you know. Let's just be honest. Second thing, last week I asked you to take out your phones and share. Uh, <clears throat> and I think we had about 48 uh, shares last week. But one thing you need to know about, about your, your social media is you can't just stop. Okay? So let's do it again together. You're going to get really good at this before it's over. Take out your phone. Go ahead. Reach down. It's in your purse. You silenced it. It's great. <clears throat> Pull it out. Gentlemen, just lean forward and get underneath your, you know, your pocket and pull it out. Go to, go to center point, and there is a new uh, uh, image, and it has many of the speakers and, and what's going to be happening here. Take that image and share it right now. But, but can I ask you to do something? Don't just share it. Just say, hey, you need to be here, or this is going to be exciting, or come, come be with me. I'll save you a seat, something fun like that with it. It adds more traction to it. Do that with us right now. Uh, we're getting, my wife said the other day, she said, I don't know if everybody's coming that has seen this from other places, but wow, she said, we're, there's a lot of people that are liking this. And uh, many, of the, many of the people are actually sharing it as well. And uh, a guy like Mike Dow that will be here Tuesday night uh, from Orlando has friends all over. They just did a conference in uh, British Columbia um, Vancouver, and so I saw some of his friends on there actually liking it as well, so uh, we're getting a lot of traction. Let me just tell you a little bit. You see those, those people listed on Monday night. Kevin Wallace will be here. He, he is the pastor of Redemption to the Nations in Chattanooga, Tennessee, um, and then Tuesday night, uh, Mike Dow will be here. He is the uh, president and founder of Burning Ones. Um, Kevin and, and Michael are both very close to our hearts. Um, they are family to us. Uh, they have been in LaGrange probably, Kevin's probably been there three times. Mike has been to LaGrange probably five times uh, to speak to us. Um, Mike is very prophetic. He just, he just flows wherever God tells him to go. He never speaks anywhere. He doesn't pray before he goes. So he's not just showing up because he feels like this is another appointment and we'll bring him another paycheck. He prays wherever he goes. And I can tell you, Pastor Kevin is very busy, and he would not be here if we did not have relationship. So those two are we're very excited about having here. And then Jim Rayleigh has spoke at, uh, at our prayer conference, uh, the prayer meeting at the beginning of the year this year. You will remember Jim Rayleigh was there. Uh, actually, it was two years ago. Uh, uh, Daniel Kalinda was there this past year. But Jim Riley is, uh, is one of those guys that when we see him at conferences, he doesn't come in and preach and leave. He stays. 
And that's a, that, that's a, that made a big impression on me and Michelle several years ago. We just we saw this guy that, that could pastors a big church in Ormond Beach, Florida, and could run off and go do other stuff and has plenty of busy schedule to keep up with, but stayed. And didn't just stay for when he was speaking. To me, that makes a big impression too. For the, uh, for the praise team, there will be uh, people that we have, we are passionately in love with and, and have relationship with. And for the, for the choir and for the music program here, let me just tell you, that is not a diss on you. It is, we, we have done this every year. We like to give you an opportunity not to have to come in and practice and be prepared, but you get to come in and worship. You get, to, you get to just be filled up. Do you know sometimes the ministry needs to be filled up as well? I mean, we, we as church members get to sit and get filled all the time, but sometimes when you're always giving out, sometimes it's nice to be able to be poured into. And so these guys will come in, and they will, they will be our leaders for that, that week, and we are just excited. And I will, fit, I will finish my, my, my commercial for Converge by telling you this. That what happens here in the sanctuary will be important. But every night, a lady by the name of Anna Phillips will be upstairs with our children. Guys, there is nobody in this world that I value or that I put more confidence in than Anna Phillips. When we were in Lee, she was there, and she was in, in Lee when I was there, and I was running around doing stupid. She was in a ministry called Clowns for the Kingdom and did that every week. She went into the city, and she was ministering to these children. When she was in college, when she wasn't getting paid, when there was no benefit, she recently has left the place of ministry that she's been for several years and she said, I am stepping out in faith, and I have no idea what God's doing. I don't have a job. I don't know where I'm going. She was, she, was, uh, she was given the award of Teacher of the Year for the state of Florida several years ago, so she can teach if she needs to. She's not going to go without a job, but I'm going to tell you, she's going to be here with our kids Sunday through Wednesday night. And when we've had her before, adults have been filled with the Holy Spirit. It wasn't just a kid adventure that they go in and have a great time. Our adults were being filled with the Spirit during the same time our children were in a kid's crusade because she's that powerful. Do not miss. Don't think this is just another, as Michelle would say, just another series of services. Guys, we don't do just series of services. We don't do just let's stay busy just to stay busy. We got two churches. We got plenty to stay busy with. Amen? You got work, you got school, you got kids, you got plenty to stay busy with. You don't need just some other something to throw on your platter. But I guarantee you it'll be something that, will, that you will not want to miss. On Sunday night, it will be just a praise night. We will come together in a group by the name of, I know you're going to laugh, Far Flung Tin Can. You've seen it on the poster. Far Flung Tin Can is a missions group. They go into missions area. They just released their latest album that was made in the Amazon. They go into these places. They encourage and lift up ministries that are in the mission field. And they go and they record. They do, uh, they do the, uh, their own music, but they also lead worship uh, across the country and around the world. So I guarantee you Sunday night will be something you won't want to miss either. Okay? Everybody okay? Everybody good? You kind of got the lowdown? That was just like... Blah, 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 blah. By the way, front row, be careful. I spit. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if there's... Ah! If you're going on the mission trip to Guatemala and you're leaving in the next couple of days, I think it's like next week, uh, if you're doing that, would you, would you stand up if you're here? You know, it's amazing. People that do missions work don't come to church. No. Okay. I want you guys to come down real quick. Because I want us just to pray over you before you go. Is that okay? You guys, this church is known as a church that loves missions. Can I tell you that there's nothing greater than we can do? Because I hear people say, well, you should help the people across the street. If you're not helping the people across the street, you don't need to go overseas. But if you're not willing to go overseas, you'll never help the people across the street either. If you're not willing to go to people, we've got a safety net. Do you realize that we're in America? We have a safety net. And when you see people over there that are five, six, seven years old, and they have no hope, 
You have 80-year-old grandparents that are taking care of them, and when they're gone, it's over. They don't, they don't have a, a welfare system. They don't have food that they can get through food stamps. There is no safety net for those people in Guatemala. And so uh, we just want to bless these guys. Would you stand with me? <clears throat> Would you guys just take hands and uh, you guys are going to be together for a long time. <clears throat> I can tell you this, that when you go on a mission trip, you're with each other almost all the time. Your nerves get on edge. This will be a good trying ground for you guys. This will be good. This will be good. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want us to pray, number one, that God blesses them with ministry opportunities. Because we can plan to go to this place and do this event, but there are opportunities far greater than that, that it's just on the street that you just walk into. And so we're going to pray for those type of ministry opportunities. And would you pray that God grant them peace and safety on this journey as well? Would you stretch your hands toward them as we pray? Heavenly Father, right now, as we lift up these that are going on this trip, God, we know that going on a trip like this is, is, is tumultuous. Lord, it, it is a challenge in our physical bodies as well as our spiritual and mental. Lord, I pray that you grant these young people and these individuals the grace to do the work that you have before them. Lord, they are going into enemy territory. They are going where people are hurting and broken. But Lord, they're also going to an open field that is white with harvest. Lord, I pray that you give them the harvest. Give them fruit for their labors. Lord, they're, they're paying for their own trip. They're going on their own dime. They're, they're making an investment in people. And Lord, I pray that every step that they take will be anointed by you. That every place the sole of their feet tread, Lord, would be anointed by you. And it would be instrumental in changing that country. Lord, we don't pray small prayers and just hope that a few people get saved. We're asking for a turnaround in that country. We're asking for, for the, the corruption in the government to cease. We're asking for you to do great and mighty things because people like these are going into their territory, but we're bringing the good news. Lord, let it be used and let it be more than they could ever imagine in their own lives. Let the grace and anointing flow freely in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Would you give these guys a hand as they go? <clears throat> Thank you. It's very appropriate what's happening today. This will be, this will be cool. You'll like this when we get to the end. <clears throat> Uh, seems like there's one more thing I'm supposed to tell you before I start preaching. Let's see. Let me look. Oh, man. I would have been in so much trouble. It's a good thing I put it down. If you ever tell me anything on Sunday, just know that I don't remember it when I leave the church. I'm just helping you guys, okay? I'm helping you. If you say, hey, I got surgery next Tuesday, pfft, don't even care. Won't even remember when I get to the door. I open my car and it's like, I don't care. I won't try to remember. I'm telling you, I won't try to remember. It is fruitless because I will not remember if it's specifics. Now, if it's general stuff like, hey, pray. I put that on my calendar, try to remember that, try to put that down on a piece of paper so I can remember to pray. And, and then there's people that are going through stuff. We know that, you know, those things continue to be brought up. As I, I get... I, repetitive stuff but if you just mention it this is that kind of stuff i'm trying to tell you some stuff that's important and i would have forgotten it if i wouldn't have put it down on my my notes you guys ready because of converge we are going to be praying together guys we can plan all we want to but without prayer and without fasting it is fruitless fruitless we can do little and God can do much if we will pray. And can, he can do more than we can do all week long in a second if we've prayed. My dad told me when he was, he was getting up in age and uh, getting ready to retire from his church. He said, son, if I had to do one thing over again, he said, I would have prayed less and worked. I would have prayed more and worked less. He said, because I tried to accomplish things that if I would have just prayed for them, God would have done them for me. 
And so I want you to know we're going to be praying. So here's the, here's, I'm just going to kind of give you the schedule. Uh, when you guys get to your car, you'll forget it. So we're going to be emailing it to you. So we'll let you know. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from this week all the way till Converge. Converge starts here in, uh, we'll be in LaGrange on that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then we'll be here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The week prior to uh, LaGrange, we won't be praying that week. But the week prior to that, so the first, the first full week of August, we will not be praying. But that, that week before, uh, we will be praying every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 to 1 in the church. You say, well, what if I can't come? Well, I'm working. That's fine. We know people have, you know, lunch hours. They may want to come and pray then. You may not have to work a certain day. You're on third shift. That, those kind of things. We're trying to work it out where there's more than one time to pray. So it'll be uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. The church will be open from 11 to 1. So you can come in and pray any of that time. And then... Uh, on Tuesday night from 7 to 8, we'll be praying together here in the sanctuary. And also, uh, the prayer team meets on Tuesday mornings at 10. So there's multiple times to pray, lots of times for you to get your prayer in. And we're going to be fasting. You fast whatever you feel appropriate. You may go, hey, I can't give up meals. i got to take my medicine. i got to do this, got to do that. Hey, you may just cut off Netflix for a, for a day. I mean, you know, I don't know. Whatever you want to fast, when, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we are doing it together, okay? If you want to fast the whole time before Converge, yes, that's great. But as a church, we're going to be doing it together Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of each week leading up to Converge, okay? You won't remember that when you get out to your car, so we'll be emailing you all of that information. God bless you. We're also going to give you a calendar that will tell you specific things to pray for during the week. Uh, leading up to those, those events. Different speakers to pray for, different ministries to pray about. Okay? Everybody okay? All right. <clears throat> now, now we can get to the message. You may say, Mark, you sure are wearing a nice tie and a jacket today. Anybody want to say that? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you. Well, I, my dad used to tell me this. He said, if you ever got something tough to say, make sure you wear a tie and a jacket. It makes it easier on them to take it. <laughs> I'm like, really, Dad? He goes, yeah, you look more professional, and they'll take it a little better from somebody that looks like they know what they're talking about. Because Dad never liked me wearing jeans and T-shirts. So it was like, okay, I'll try that, Dad. So I'm, I'm wearing something because I think I have some really important things to tell you today. Last week we started a series called, I Think I'm Losing. I Think I'm Losing. And we last week talked about, I Think I'm Losing Control. And uh, how important it is for us not to be in a position where we always have to be in control. We always have to have everything our way, have to have uh, our, our ideas and our agendas. Today I want to talk to you ab about a little thought called, I think I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> have you ever lost your voice? That's why I said this was appropriate because I feel I'm losing my voice. Have you ever lost your voice? Have you ever had laryngitis, something like that? You've been sick and you, you get the little croup and you try to talk and you'd go, I, I want it. I, and you get so frustrated, don't you? Man, you're just trying to push it out and the harder you try, the less comes out. I want it. And I love it when my wife gets it because she wants to tell me off. And they get to sit back and go, ha, 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 you can't say anything. Yeah, <laughs> Shirley said, yeah, right, she is right, and I don't do that. <clears throat> but can I tell you that we're talking about losing your voice. Ah, you know what, I see people moving. I'm sorry, we didn't take up the offering yet, did we? No, you guys want to wait till the end, or you want to do it now? Now? Okay, somebody said now over here, okay. That's, you know what they're saying is, we'd rather not listen to you continue this. We'd rather you just stop. Look, you're going to lose your voice, young lady. <clears throat> Good gracious, I can't believe I forgot this. Okay, well, they're already standing. Let's go ahead and do it. Because I know you're excited about giving, right? Yeah, yeah. woo! Uh, you're excited about not hearing the sermon, right? Yeah, woo! No. God, we ask that you bless our gifts. God, giving is not just something we do haphazardly. It's not just something we just go through the motions of. We, we know that you honestly and sincerely bless what we bring to you. 
So, Lord, never let us take it lightly. Never, never let us just go through the motions of doing it. And, Lord, forgive me for not remembering just how important this time is. I ask that you bless the gifts that we bring, that they be used to glorify your name and the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Please forgive me. I got so excited about talking about losing your voice that I forgot to tell you about what we were, you know. Anyway. All right, I'm going to take a drink, and I'm going to breathe, and I'm going to let you give. How about that? I'll do a little soft shoe after I get done drinking, and then we'll go forward. You thought I was kidding, didn't you? Now, when we speak and we say, well, somebody lost their voice, it could be literal. You could be sick and you could lose your voice. But we use that term for more than just losing your actual voice. We will say that people have lost their voice. They've lost their opportunity to have influence in people's lives. Because of circumstances or situations that may have come about, you can lose the right to speak into other people's lives. A divorce may happen in your family. Guess what? You lose the right and you lose your voice to speak into your former spouse's life. (laughs) That goes without saying, doesn't it? It's like people say, well, I was married to this person and now they're upset that I'm doing this. Well, who cares what they think? They've lost the opportunity to speak into your life. They've lost their voice But it also happens with our children. Sometimes through a divorce, there's children that go, I don't want mom or dad having a voice in my life anymore. Sometimes it happens uh, because of age. Sometimes we lose our voice because we become what would be termed by the culture irrelevant. And they go, oh, you, you just can't speak because you're not relevant. You're not up to date. You're not current. You're out of date with what's happening. So you've lost your voice to speak to a current generation. Sometimes people are disrespectful and because of their disrespect they lose the opportunity to speak and they lose their influence with certain people. My daughter is, uh, for those of you that know her, she is, well let me just say it like this, she's a mess. And in LaGrange, she will say this to us sometimes. She will go, so mom and dad, do we like them? Talking about people in the church now. Do we like them? Well, what are you talking about, Laura? Uh, Have they been ugly to you? Well, no. I mean, no. No, no, no. I want to know. Because I want to know if I got to like them or not. Well, baby, you have to love them. I love them. I hope they go to heaven. But I need to know if they've done you wrong, I ain't going to like them. She's willing to say, you don't get the opportunity to speak and you don't matter. Your voice is irrelevant. We try to help her through that. So if you guys get an opportunity to speak into her life, make sure it's somebody she respects. Because there's some of you we've talked about over there too. But I don't know. We won't talk about that yet. (laughs) Today I want us to talk about... I think I'm losing my voice. And I want us to begin with prayer. Because what we're going to talk about today is going to challenge you to step outside yourself and say, God, am I speaking the way I should? And it challenges us at the core. For those of you that may be visiting and maybe maybe new to the church and you haven't accepted Christ yet, this, this will not be a salvation message. For the church, for the people that know Christ, for the people that have come into relationship with Christ, this is for you today. And can I tell you that Jesus most of the time talked to the religious leaders harsher than he talked to the world. So let's get ready. Heavenly Father, we thank you. That you can speak to us about the voice we should have and not what we think we should be saying. We ask that you anoint our minds and our hearts to receive today. So they'll be ready to hear what you have to say to us and not what we want to say. In Jesus' name, amen. 
First thing, if you're taking notes, the first thing you need to recognize is that we all have a voice. So the first point on your bulletin is my voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. We all have voices. All God's children have voices. And when you hear my voice, it's not enticing. It sounds to me a lot of times like when I'm speaking, like I'm eating mashed potatoes. If you hear me sing, it sounds worse than that. We have, uh, as the sound man was getting ready today, he said, uh, he said I, won't, I, won't, I won't unmute you for sure until you're up there ready to go. And I said, well, we used to record on Pro Tools in LaGrange, and my music pastor there would, would oftentimes catch me with my mic on unmuted, but it would be muted in the sound booth, which means it recorded to the computer. So as we're singing great songs like the choir sang today, I'm on the front row blaring my guts out. And he would record it and then put a compilation disc together. <laughs> Can I tell you, you've never heard such. I let my dad hear it one day. We're going to talk about my dad in just a few minutes. But my dad said one day, I said, Dad, you got to listen to this. And it was, Oh, How He Loves. You know that beautiful song. My dad, my dad said, My Lord, son, don't do this. <laughs> I said, Dad, nobody heard it. He goes, Thank God. <laughs> So we all have voices, and some of our voices are pretty, and some of our voices are not so pretty. But I want to talk to you about the voice that you have that your life speaks. Not your voice that comes out of your mouth, but the, the voice that our lives speak. That I have a voice that I get to speak to people. <clears throat> and the first thing we need to recognize with our voice is that I have influence. I want to talk, to about, talk to you about my influence and your influence. James chapter 3, verse 4 and 5 says this. <clears throat> a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. No matter who you are, no matter how insignificant you think you are. Let's be honest, in our world today, there are people around us that feel like their voice doesn't matter. That I am insignificant, I have no influence, no one listens to my words. But can I tell you that you, you and your words have influence. They have influence. They attract people. Somebody is being influenced by your words. Can, and I, I don't know if she's in here. Is, is Berkeley in here? Is she really? Is, does Taylor have her? Is she asleep? No, she's not asleep. Is she comfortable with being on stage? Is she comfortable with coming up here, Taylor? Will she come up here with me? Taylor, can you come up here with her? <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Don't be afraid. We're, I'm going to stay up here and you don't have to preach. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to talk to these people about you. Is that okay? Do you want to? Okay. Yeah, she said, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we, let's go up here so everybody can see us. <clears throat> when I talk about your influence, the other day, I guess Aaron and Berkeley were at home, and she was, she was kind of preaching. She was using the Bible. Got it right? And, uh, and, oh, you don't know. Mom, come up here so we don't mess up this story. No, I'm right so far? Tell me if I'm wrong. And so she's preaching and she's talking in the Bible and she's saying like she's preaching the words, right? And she said, and God said something, something. And she said, and Pastor Mark. And is that, did I do it? Did I say it right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she said my name. Guys, I don't even know she knows who I am. I don't even know that she is hearing anything. You worry about your children hearing, and you've got a child who's sitting there and, and know, knows my name, know, knows who I am, knows that I'm her pastor. But, but even greater than that, and I brought you up here because the other day, I called Taylor to help me with something, right? I said, hey, I need some help with a car. And he calls me back, and he says, hey, sorry, I missed you. What's up? I said, well, I got this 
a girl trying to buy a car, and I wanted to know. I know you know about electric cars, and they t then he told me he didn't know near as much as I thought. They acted like he knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then as we start to hang up, he said, no problem, pastor. Call me anytime. Guys, I'm just telling you, I am not okay with this. I'm serious. Because because for you guys, I mean, we came back and we said, I'm Mark, right? I mean, I'm, I'm still the same guy. But when, I mean, I, Michelle will say it all the time to you younger kids. Spencer, she said it the other day to him. You know, it's like, I remember when you were just a little baby. But well, this guy's been on ski trips with me. I mean, we've, we've hung out. I saw those pictures the other day, actually. I know, I saw some on Facebook, too. So, I mean, like, we're... Well, we're not buds. We're not, I'm not that young. <laughs> we're not hanging, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but when he calls me pastor, you know what that says to me? My words have influence that I should never take, as the old people used to say, this desk lightly. Because every word that comes out of my mouth has influence because I'm a pastor. But can I tell you that your words are just as powerful to the people you have influence around as well. That you speak things in jest or you just say things that really hold weight with people. And there's little children that are listening. There's kids that are listening at home to what you're saying moms and dads. And guess what? You have influence. Thank you. You're and you honored me the other day by saying that. I was like, whoa, God. <laughs> Try not to cry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's not the only one. I, I thought about Alan the other day who was a teenager in the church with us as we were running around here. And Terry, who never came to youth group. Actually, Terry called me. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Terry called me, or, or he, he may have called me either that or he emailed me several years after they'd left here. They were doing youth ministry, and he said, I want to tell you I'm sorry for not being there because now I know what it's like to lead a youth group, and I wasn't there when I should have been to help you. All right, those things matter because those words that were spoken, even, even Taylor's words and and, and Terry's words and, and Alan's, those things matter because they hold weight. You have influence, people. Your words matter. Your Facebook posts matter. Moms, dads, teachers, waiters, tellers at the bank, we all have influence. The other day we were walking in to see Brandon at the hospital, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the hospital in a minute, but as we were walking in, the security guard there on the, she was just sitting there, and we said, wow, we it's kind of coming in a different way this time, and she's like, oh yeah, but you're in the greatest place ever, and we went, you a security guard? She said, oh, whenever I'm having a bad day, I just want to get to Shepherd Spinal Clinic. Who are you? She said, I just love being here. It's so encouraging. The people are so wonderful. Michelle said, wouldn't it be great if people said that about churches? And this lady's just a security guard that works the shift there. And she was just saying how excited her words made us feel great about being there. I was walking through the halls going, man, I'm glad to be here today. It changed our whole outlook on having to go visit because it was like, Wow, this really is a great place. Your words have influence. The Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. She chose to use her influence to encourage. The second thing we find out about my voice and your voice is that it's your identity, my identity. John chapter 7 verse 16 says, So Jesus told them, my message is not my own. It comes from God who sent me. My message is not my own. Most of us, our voice is our identity. See, I should she seek to lose my life or lose my voice. My identity should come from him. Jesus never came to speak of himself. The Holy Spirit didn't come to lift up himself. But we get our identity from our voice. 
Have you ever heard somebody say, that sounds just like your mom or dad? Or that sound? Yesterday, we, as we were in the hospital, if you've been to Piedmont lately, man, the one on Peachtree, man, they are, man, that place is beautiful. I'm like, man, I want to go to the hospital here. I mean, hey, and you can ask anybody. I love to go to the hospital. The beds are wonderful. I love it. I can sleep through any blood pressure. I can sleep through any pills. I just go to sleep. Man, that little bed adjusting, I love it. I'm going to Piedmont next week, or at least after Converge. I can guarantee you I'll be there. I'm confessing it. I get to stay in the hospital for at least two days. All right. You guys are going, don't be sick. You're, you're confessing stuff. Yes, I love hospital beds. Just get me one. I'll take it home. <laughs> so I'm going through, the, going through the hospital, and we see this hospital. Oh, man. I said, man. And we got in the elevator, and I told Michelle, I said, man, I wish my dad, because my dad had his knees replaced there. I said, I wish my dad could see the hospital. And then the elevator opened, and I walked in, and I chuckled to myself, because I heard in my head his voice, and I could hear him go, my God, son, I don't want to go down there and look at that hospital. And I said it out loud, and my wife then began to laugh. And she said, Mark, that sounded just like your dad. It sounded, in other words, I had taken on the identity of my dad. I could say it just like I'd heard him say it before. I knew his attitude. I knew his heart. He didn't want to go trampsing down to a stupid hospital to see how pretty the glass looked. And you know what? We're a reflection of our Father. And guess what? Your voice should take on the identity, not of your own agenda and your own thoughts, but it ought to take on the ideas and the thoughts and the agenda of our Father. It ought to be His identity, not your own. Do you sound like the Father? Do you say things He would say? Sounds like you, or does it sound like Jesus? See, we see we're to act like Jesus and look like Jesus. But I want to challenge you that you should sound like Jesus as well. The third thing about my voice is that oftentimes it's my opinion. Genesis chapter 27 verse 22 says, So Jacob went closer to his father and Isaac touched him. And the voice of Jacob, the voice is Jacob's. But the hands are Esau's, Isaac said. Let's be honest. Some of me is going to come out. When me and Michelle are here speaking, and it's amazing how when she speaks, it feels like E.F. Hutton, thunder roll, right? It's like she's got the voice of God. It's like I am speaking as if God was here himself, and people get scared like that. God, this is, we got people over in the grain saying, I ain't saying nothing about Michelle. I'm afraid she'll prophesy over me and something. <laughs> but see, I don't get that. Nobody's really scared of me. I mean, they're like, okay, it's cool. <laughs> A little bit of us is going to come out when we use our voices. It's going to sound like you. It's going to be like you. It's going to have your opinions. But, but we can't allow our opinions to alter the voice that God wants us to say. Because sometimes my opinions will cause people to stumble. Sometimes my opinions are based on my beliefs and not the word of God. And we will deal with that a little later. Let's move on. Let's talk about his voice. His voice. What, what do we know about his voice? Number one, I want you to know that his voice trumps mine. His voice trumps mine. John chapter 12 verse 49 says this. Don't speak. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. I want you to notice there that Jesus says not only does the Father command him what to say, but he tells him how to say it. We've heard all our lives. It's not... It's not what you said that hurt me so bad. It's how you said it. <laughs> right? 
That's what us guys do, right? Oh, please. And the girls are all emotional. It really does matter. You spoke harshly to me. Except in my house, it's totally the opposite. <laughs> Please don't tell her I said that. I am begging on bended knees. Please do not. <laughs> See, what we do is we think that we can say whatever we want and it doesn't matter. But Jesus is telling us in this scripture that he is only talking what the Father has told him to say and he's telling him how to say it and we think we're independent and we think what we say don't matter but if Jesus worried about what he was going to say we ought to worry about what's coming out of our mouth the last part of that verse verse 50 says uh, because I know his words lead to eternal life see last week we talked a little bit about that, that I know we have to work and we have to, we have to tell people to get off their brakes if that's your job. Or you have to discuss with contra- contractors what's going to happen. Or you have to ask people if they want a shopping cart. But that may not lead to eternal life. It's what we have to do. It's the jobs we have to possess to make a living. And it's time for a break to be over, ladies. Let's go back to work. Can we build this wall here or is there going to be a problem with the foundation? Those words are not going to bring eternal life. But with the words we have that we get to choose what to say, do we really bring eternal life into the picture? Are our words encouraging and lifting people up or are they bringing them down? Our optional talk, what we speak during the day, should bring hope. It should bring the possibility of eternal life. It should bring encouragement. Because if we're speaking what he's telling us to speak, it won't be my agenda, it'll be his. Second thing about his voice is that it causes trembling. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 says, I will raise up a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he will tell the people everything I command him. Here again, God is giving the words to say. God's words to his people were not always fond words. It wasn't always easy things to get around. It wasn't always happy days and There were days when the word of God came from the prophets and it was, you're going into isolation. You're going into captivity and you're going to have to stay there and you're not going to like it. But that's the word of the Lord for today because you haven't obeyed and you haven't been faithful. And here's what you're going to get. And I got to tell you, those words are not necessarily our favorite words to hear. And they can bring trembling the other day I was walking into a meeting, I'm, I'm on a, uh, women, it's called Women's First Choice Pregnancy Center, it's an, uh, an alternative to abortion and we try to save children's lives and as I was getting ready for the meeting I walked into the office and I, I, I went past this one room and the, uh, the uh, uh, volunteer uh, rep was there, she kind of works with the volunteers and the counselors and as I walked past her I just looked at her and I said, hey, I said, um, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be having a meeting with you as a representative from the board. I'm I'm supposed to set up a meeting with you, but we just haven't done it yet. And I'm sorry, I I haven't been able to do that yet. And she looked at me and she said, what's the meeting about? And I said, I'm just kidding, they're in the meeting. I'm just messing with you. She said, oh my goodness, you scared me to death. I thought, I've only been here six months and I'm fixing to get fired. (laughs) And amazing, that's the way we do, right? I mean, it's like, my dad used to say, son, I need to talk to you in my office. And it's like, <laughs> I don't want to talk to you in your office. I mean, there's these words that come to us that we automatically go, oh, this is. Can I tell you that God doesn't always come with fear and trembling, but when we need it, he can come and drop the hammer. And his words ought to be something that we reflect on and go, okay, God, what are you saying to us? 
What are you needing to tell me? But can I tell you, we don't tremble at God's voice anymore. Many of us don't care. In the world, they don't care what God says. Can I, can I give the church a newsflash? Quit worrying about what the world doesn't agree with God about. You're wasting your time. They say, like, oh, well, they're not honoring God's word. They're not supposed to. One day every knee will bow. We'll get them then. But until then, many of us worry about stuff. But can I tell you a bigger problem? God's word has become so familiar to the church that we brush it off. When God speaks, we act like it's not a big deal. Can I give you a great uh, uh, natural illustration of something supernatural? I like doing that sometimes because it's easier to recognize it in the natural. And when you see it in the natural, you can go, oh, that's what's happening in the spirit realm. You ready? Your children. You go, you better clean up your room. Kid comes back. Hmm. It's just mom. It's just dad. No big deal. I clean my room up when I get ready to. I had a friend. We were growing up together. His name's Eric. We used to call him Easy. Six foot six, about 345, 350 pounds. Dude, this boy was a hoss. His daddy was about two inches taller than him and about 20 pounds heavier but a lot more leaner. He was in the Army, and his daddy was a big boy. I'll never forget sitting in the room one day with him. Me and Eric was at his house. We were crashing on the couch. Eric's dad come in. He said, Eric, will not you get out there and mow the grass? Eric said, and he had this way about him, he'd go, yeah, yeah, in a minute. He said that to me, he said that to his dad, he said it to everybody. Yeah, yeah, in a minute. He'd walk down the hall and we'd say, hey, Eric, yeah, yeah, in a minute. Didn't pay any attention to us. He said, yeah, yeah, in a minute, Dad. About 15 minutes later, his dad walked back in the room and he said, Eric, I said, get out there and mow the grass now. Yeah, yeah, in a minute, Dad. You thought it was bad then. It wasn't. Because his dad was kind. No, he wasn't. <laughs> dad would cuss you out. Dude, I'm telling you. Friend or foe. He didn't care. Dude, he would lay into you. But I'm going to use you as an example, okay? I ain't never used you before as an example. Come over here. No, let's go up here so they can see what happened. <laughs> I hope I don't. Rodney, you can fix these back tomorrow. I know where my help comes from. All right, sit down there. When Eric's dad walked in the room the third time, Eric knew he meant business. Well, I got to show you something else, too. Hold on. But because Eric was a big boy, you won't know this if I don't show you. Eric was a big boy. So when Eric got up, it was an act of Congress. And Eric was laid down in a chair like this. And when his dad came in and said, get up and... Mow the grass. Eric went, oh, yeah, Daddy, like this. <laughs> and it got about right here, okay? So you got that. You got, you, you got to watch now. You ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Dad. You ready? And then you do this. Do, you do this, and then pull up like this. And that right there, okay? That's what I'm looking for, okay? All right. I know it's going to be hard on you without that belly, but you're going to have to try. <laughs> All right. Eric's dad walks in the room. And Eric knew it was on. And his daddy said, Eric, boy, I told him. Go ahead, start moving. Because he knew it was coming. You ain't done that. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You got to lean so you can get that belly up. All right. So he, go ahead now. He said, and when he got right there, he took his forearm and he went, boom. Eric went back into the cow. Stand up again. Let me show him again. Boom. <laughs> Let me do it again. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Dude, when Eric hit the couch, he come back up. He didn't take any steps getting up. He went, phew, just like that. Wasn't no struggle. He stood straight up. He said, yeah, yeah, daddy, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Can I tell you in the natural, that's what we do with God. Yeah, yeah, God, in a minute. 
I need you to be ready to go to Ingalls to witness. To, yeah, yeah, God, in a minute. I need you to be prepared to be the instrument and to speak what I tell you to speak when I tell you to speak. Yeah, yeah, God, in a minute. And we get mad when God walks in the room and we're like, oh, I missed it. How did I miss it? Because you weren't listening. Because you were just saying, yeah, yeah, in a minute. Don't miss what God's doing with his voice in your life. Because it's supposed to make us tremble. I'm sorry, I made you tremble. I didn't really make you tremble, did I? By the way, do you guys know? This is one of my boys when I drove the bus. I'm all the way back then. He was on my bus route on Central Lake Circle. I picked him up every day, him and his brother. Man, I'm so happy. When I saw him in church, I said, oh, I cannot believe this. Now you know what influence will do. Won't get them in church. They didn't come one time while I was here. <laughs> it was the seed that was sown, though. That's what it was. Third thing about God's voice is you need to understand it carries weight. John 6, 28, I mean 6, 68 says, Simon Peter replied, Lord, to whom will we go? You have the words that give eternal life. Jesus didn't come just to save us. I want you to get that. I want you just to sink in for just a minute. Because this changes a lot of our theology. Oh, Jesus came to seek and save that was lost. Yes, he did come to save us. But that's not the only reason he came. He came to set up his kingdom here on the earth. And he came to give us the weight of his voice. Let your kingdom come here on the earth as it is in heaven. See, last week we spoke that Jesus spoke to the winds and waves and they obeyed. Your words carry the same weight and our voices have the same power if we'll get in alignment with his voice. If we'll speak what he speaks. If we'll say what he says. Death and life are in your tongue and your words are giving eternal life then let our mouth speak the same life. Speak life. Let it carry the weight that life and death are in them. Speak life. Don't speak death. Third thing. If you guys are helping me out, I know some of you are helping me out with something here in just a minute. If you want to make your way, uh, you can make your way up here now. Uh, we got just a few more points, but at least you'll know. And if you're sitting there going, I don't know who he's talking to, and it ain't you. <laughs> just so you know, I'm just helping y'all out. If, you, if you're sitting there wondering and you, you're going, did he? No, it ain't you then. Just sit there. But if you're helping me out with something, y'all, see, look at this. See, people know what I'm talking about. All right. I want to talk about our voice for just a minute. And can I tell you, this is where it's going to get rough. Second Chronicles. The trumpeter and the singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord, accompanied by trumpets and uh, cymbals and other instruments. And they raised their voices and praised the Lord with these words, He is good and, he, uh, and His faithful love endures forever. At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. First thing you need to understand about our voice is it's our mandate. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, your mandate is to have one voice with the body. That things don't happen until we understand our mandate. Let me give you another scripture here. If you got it, you can go ahead and throw it up. Uh, Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1. Shout with the voice of a trumpet blast. Shout aloud. Do not be timid. Tell my people Israel of their sins. See, it's our mandate to be God's mouthpiece here on the earth. He is not here to speak, but you are his mouthpieces. The King James Version says to cry aloud and spare not. It is our call to say what he says to say. 
And it's not my agenda. It's not what I want to say. It's what thus saith the Lord. Can I tell you that my wife challenges me every once in a while? Because especially during the political season, I like to become actively involved. Actually, what we call it is stirring the pot. That's really probably a better way to say it. I just, I just like it. I just can't help it. It's just who I am. It's my voice. And my wife will say, Mark, you need to use your filter. See, none of you guys have to deal with this. You would have known if you'd had to use your filter before. She'll say, Mark, you need to use your filter. You know what I've done now? Because with a filter, it's kind of weird. Because if you use it and you don't tell them you've used it, they don't know. Things come up on Facebook and I want to post. And I go, type, 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 mm, delete, delete, delete. And Michelle never knows. So I never get any praise. <laughs> she doesn't know I'm using my filter, so I have to say, oh, Michelle, let me read this post to you. She goes, Mark, I do not care. Let me read it to you, though. Blah, 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 blah. You know what I wanted to say? She said, well, I don't care. I go, no, listen, this is what I wanted to say. Mark, you do not need to say that. I said, I used my filter, and I didn't. <laughs> and she says, well, I'm very proud of you. And then she'll pat me on the back, and I feel better about myself. <laughs> but I need her to know. I've used my filter. See, my mandate, as she would say, is to be the Facebook police. That I live my life looking for things that are error and go, nope, that's not true. You can check snoops. That is not absolutely the facts. You need to go back and look. Somebody said the other day that uh, President Trump was the first president to ever not take a paycheck in presidency. That's not true. Snoops. Link. I put it in. I said, there's your facts for you, ma'am. <laughs> and then I go, God, I wish Michelle wasn't on Facebook. Because I would do more of this if I could. <laughs> and then she told me the other day she's not. That she's deleted her count. Oh, swing wide the gates. I'm coming home. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's open for me now. I get to do as I wish. No, it's not. I have to be godly. I have to be godly, right? I have to use my mandate for the godly things he said. So I'm like, okay, I need to use my filter. We all need to use our filter. John chapter 3 verse 11 says, I assure you, you we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you do not believe our testimony. It is my job to speak the truth. In love. Do you love me? Because we know about the truth and some of the truth we like to set aside because we really don't like that truth. That we want to pick and choose the truth. But the statement says the truth will set you free. But we always don't like it. Our mandate is to be his voice here on the earth. So what's our response? Our voice, what is our response? Psalms chapter 57, uh, 59 verse 17. And this is out of the voice. It says, I will lift my voice to sing your praise. O oh, my strength. For you came to my defense. O oh, God, you have shown me your loving mercy. You ready for this? When we speak, we have to make sure that our response is in response to his response. What? What did he just say? I didn't get that. Listen, it is our response to respond to his response of love in our lives. The grace and mercy he showed to us, it's my responsibility to show that. My voice ought to have inflections of his love and grace sprinkled in it every day. And the problem is the church has forgotten this. We become so judgmental. 
Oh God, you have shown me your loving mercy to us. Not to somebody else. We all in this room were a mess. Quit acting like you're that holy. Quit acting like you're God's gift to the kingdom. He could do it without you. But he chose to do it in spite of you. And we need to respond with the love and grace and mercy that God has given to us. And we get fired up about what's right and wrong in this world. We need to have the same grace and love that God had. I'll give you an example. You got your seatbelts on? Because I'm going to give you a personal example to what this looks like. You're not ready. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't mean that. God, please forgive me. I don't mean it to sound like that. I've heard my wife say, I don't think you can handle that. She's almost like that movie. A few good men. You can't handle the truth. I don't mean it like that. I don't mean it. She says that to me a lot. And you can tell her I said that because that's the truth. The mess that's happening at our borders right now down in Mexico. It's a mess. My question to the church my question to Center Point Church is what would God's response be to that right now? Oh, think about it if you want to. I mean, if you need time to think about what God's response to that would be, take just a minute. Because I can tell you it doesn't line up with political affiliations in any way, shape, form, or fashion. It's not what the Republicans would say, and it's not what the Democrats would say. Because that's where we take most of our information, and most of our, our response comes from what they'll tell us to do. But that's not God's response. You go, well, i got to be honest with you. I think Jesus would be in Washington making political statements. You've lost your mind. Well, I think Jesus would be in the synagogues talking to us about the laws. No, he wouldn't. Remember, he got in trouble for just going and gra grazing some grain. You go, well, that wasn't the law. That was the Jewish law. Yeah, it was the law, but let me tell you something. The Jews had enough law to get him crucified. Remember Jesus? I mean, he's the one that said, I have needs to go through Samaria to see a woman who had been married five times and was living with the sixth. And you really want to sit here and talk to me about laws? What would God's response be? God's response would be he would send Jesus to the border to be his voice in the middle of chaos. Oh, it's, it's not popular. I told you to put your seatbelts on. Because I'm not about a political agenda. I'm not a, a, a candidate running for an office. I'm here to try to get the church to realize that our voice matters. This is the same man who was told by the Jewish leaders, and they looked at him and said, this man eats with sinners. Church, we've got to get past our agendas, because I can tell you that this America is not the kingdom of God. As much as we may think it is, it's not. It's still man-made. It's still Babylon. It's still made by men. And in the end, it will fall. And the only kingdom that's going to stand is the kingdom of our God. And we can build our allegiance to a lot of different things, but you better be finding your allegiance to God. And you better be ready to respond with one voice. And that is this, last point, is our unity. See, if the church has got 15 different voices going on, how do we ever expect them out there to hear what God's saying? Because I get confused just listening sometimes to the church. Do we go this way? Do we go that way? How about we don't go either way and we just stand on the rock? 
How about we don't try to decide? We just say, God, what do you say about this? How can I read in my word and get your response to this? Our unity is important. Exodus chapter 24, verse, 11, uh, verse 3. It says, Then Moses went down to the people and repented, uh, repeated all the instructions and regulations that the Lord had given him. Listen to this. All the people answered with one voice. All the people. Is that all of us? With one voice. We will do everything the Lord has commanded I've asked these gentlemen to do me a favor. We'll start over here. I want them, I ask them to pick their favorite song. Did you get one, Dwayne? Okay, good. You're just going to make it up. He ain't going to play nothing. He's just going to start playing. We won't know. We won't know. You don't have to tell us a song. You just said you had to look for a song. Did you get, you, you're good? Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. Are you playing with us? No. Okay, you don't have a favorite song. All right, here's what I want you to do. You got your song? Get ready. All right, here we go. I want you to play it. Go ahead, you're starting with us, right? All right, you ready? But here's what I want. I want you to play your song too at the same time. I want you to play your favorite song too. Well, you going to play a song? All right, I want, I want, are you ready? On three, I want you guys to play your favorite songs. Ready? One, two, three. Does any, did anybody recognize any of those songs? You recognize that one? What was it? Huh? Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for having your own voice. Yeah, it's great. It's your moment to shine and you just let it go. <laughs> we can't tell. Why? Because it's so dysfunctional. There's four different songs being played by four different people. That's what happens in the church. We're saying and doing our own things and not listening to God for His voice. And it sounds like a bunch of junk to the world. God is looking for unity. Don't you ever think for one minute your personality is not going to come out. Because when I say stuff, it's different than when Michelle says stuff. When you see these converged people, they're every one of them. You may say, oh, well, Mark likes this style. I'm telling you, Michael Dow is so different than Kevin Wallace. It is pathetic. They are nothing alike. But guess what? They both have the word of God. They both are speaking for God. Me and Michelle are as different as day and night. I am sweating more here, though. I don't know if it's I got more room to move or what, but I'm tired of this. If I had a building like this, I'd put air in it. That's what I would do, but that's up to you guys. That's what the church sounds like. Now, I think we got one other song, right? You got another song? Okay. Now, play this other song. Everybody, you ready? On three, are you guys ready? Yeah. You'll do it. Let me do it. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead, you can do it. <laughs> now, isn't it funny we all knew that? I mean, we could, we could understand what was going on. That's what happens in the body when we all speak what God tells us to speak, it becomes, you know, because guess what? There's people in the body that are to prophesy. There's people in the body that are to be apostles. There are people in the body that are to be teachers. There are people in the body that are to be pastors. There are people in the body that are supposed to be evangelists. But guess what? When it's all said and done, they form a unity that brings one voice before the world. You may see somebody and they say, I believe that God's got a word for you. Can I tell you, if you hear that from me, don't run, but be very careful. 
because I am, I am operating at a new level. And every time there's a new level, you have to be tested. You don't, I don't just walk up to somebody and say, Thus saith the Lord over your life, because I am just so confident in what God's doing in me. I know I hear his voice. I got this. Let me tell you what God said to you. And you go, man, that wasn't even close. And guess what? I destroy the body because she thinks, well, I've seen kids that will leave home, go off and do stuff because somebody said, I've got a word for you. And it wasn't anywhere near God. We've got to operate in the gifts that God's blessed us with and not go off running trying to have every gift. They're in the body. They're here. But they're to be operated in with love and with wisdom. And we are to speak with one voice. Are you willing to put your agenda aside? Are you willing to put your ideology aside? Are you willing to put your judgmental attitudes aside? To say, God, I don't want to speak with my voice anymore. I want to lose my voice. God, I don't want to have my voice. Don't let me speak words that are my words. Let me speak what you say. What you say. What you say, God. Will you bow your heads with me? There's a song... I definitely won't be singing it today. But the song, the songwriter wrote these words. He said, I want to see what you see. I want to hear what you hear. I want to speak what you speak. Declaring your will in the earth. As it is in heaven. I want to say what you say. Learn how to walk in your way. I'm going to pray what you pray. Declaring your will in the earth. As it is in heaven. Over the next few days. We're going to be praying for a conference called Converge. When the final wording came, came out and we said, we like converge, Michelle said, I pray for a converging of heaven to kiss earth. I pray for there to be a place where, where heaven comes down and collides with earth. God, can we have that? Can we experience that? But God, don't let us just experience it so that we feel good in the moment and get to see your cloud of glory and we can go to all our friends and talk about what happened at church. But God, allow us to have that moment so that we realize your kingdom is coming. And we've got to speak with one voice. Heavenly Father, I pray for your church today. God, we have stretched ourselves. If we really are honest with ourselves, a word like this doesn't cause us excitement, but causes us to tremble. Because God, we need to realize the weightiness of our words on a world around us. There's many different churches with many different doctrine and many different ideas. God, they're swirling out there. But in the end, your church is based on a few key facts. Lord, let us never forget those close-handed ideas. But Lord, when we look around our world, there's a lot of things that we could have opinions about. A lot of things that we could be challenged to speak out about. God, help us to speak with clarity what you say and not what we think. 
Help us to know your word and never, ever, God, never, ever, ever, ever let us speak for you if we don't know you. Never let us use your name as something to be a battering ram for our agendas and our ideas when we don't know you. God, we repent for every time we've caused someone to stumble, someone to fall. God, we repent for every time we haven't used our voice in connection with your voice to make a difference in this world. And every time we've missed the opportunity because we've brushed you off, we repent today. God, corporately, we repent. We ask you to forgive us. And God, I pray that as we have those opportunities in the future, that you will avail us the opportunity to shine. Not so that we get the glory, but so we reflect your glory in this world. Lord, again, we are grateful for this family. We are grateful. Lord, let, let us not feel trembling in the sense of being beat up. But Lord, let us be sensitive to the aweness of who you are. And to what you've commanded us to do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You say, Mark, I hear him. I hear his voice. I hear him drawing me. The Bible says that you would only come to Christ unless the Spirit draw you. Maybe he's drawing you this morning. You feel that tugging in your heart. You're saying, this may be the day for me. You say, I'd like to know Jesus personally. We have some altar workers that will be present at the end of the service that would like to talk to you about this relationship. Like to help you walk through the process. And we'd love to be the church that you choose to worship at to say, this is my process. This is where I'm headed. And I'm ready to go to the next level. I'm ready to take the next step. We encourage that in your life. Would you stand with me? It's been a good day.